Okay, today I'm going to be seeing if you can use a microwave to charge glow-in-the-dark stuff. So I'm going to be testing regular glow-in-the-dark materials and then I'm going to be testing it with lit. So this lit pigment is the brightest glow-in-the-dark pigment on the market. So I've had a lot of requests to see what happens when I put it in the microwave. Will it just start glowing? So first we'll try some regular glow-in-the-dark material and then we'll try it with lit and see if this actually glows in the dark when we just stick it in the microwave. And then if it does work, I'm going to be using lit to find the standing wave pattern in the microwave. Okay, so first we'll try just regular glow-in-the-dark plastic. So these are just glow-in-the-dark stars that you can stick on your room walls or something. And I have blue, green, and pink in case there's any difference between the colors. Let's see if this can get charged in a microwave. Okay, let's put in our stars. Okay, lights out. Let's start the microwave. Three, two, one. Don't see anything getting any brighter in there. Didn't get brighter at all. Okay, so the reason you can't see anything is because they didn't get brighter at all in the microwave. <laughs> so they didn't get charged in any way. They're completely dark. Okay, so no real surprise here. These did not glow in the dark when we put them in the microwave. That's because glow-in-the-dark materials cannot be charged with light that has a lower frequency than the light that it emits. And so because these emit green light, you have to charge it with something that has a higher frequency than green light. And microwaves are not even close to high enough frequency. However, that doesn't mean you can't charge any glow-in-the-dark materials with microwaves. That's because some glow-in-the-dark materials can actually be charged by heat. One of those special glow-in-the-dark materials is lit here. So if you just heat lit up with a hair dryer, you can see it start to glow slightly. So let's try it out and see if we can get lit to glow in the microwave. And if I can get it to glow, then I want to paint it on a board and see if I can see the standing wave pattern in a microwave. So let's see if this all works. Let's try out this first. Okay, so you can see the container already glowing from just the ambient light that it was in. Now let's put it in the microwave and see if it gets any brighter. Okay, lit in the microwave. Three, two, one. It's starting to glow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> okay, so that was pretty clear. The lit definitely started glowing in the microwave. And I wanna be clear that this was due to the heat and not due to the microwaves. It may seem like one and the same thing, but it's actually not. The heat was heating up the plastic. The plastic was heating up the pigment. So what's happening here is called thermal luminescence. And as I mentioned before, in order to charge a glow-in-the-dark material, you need light that has a higher frequency than the light that it emits. And so the light that it's emitting when it gets heated is actually light that was essentially stored in the glow-in-the-dark material. So earlier when this material was exposed to light, some of the electrons that got knocked up to the higher energy state they couldn't get back down and so they got trapped there and those electrons remain trapped there until the molecules around it wiggle enough to knock them loose and let them fall back down to a lower energy state and that's when they emit the light and so thermal luminescent materials they can release light that was stored there in the form of electrons that are trapped in a higher energy state but now that we know that lit can actually be charged in the microwave I'm going to use it to be able to find the standing wave pattern in a microwave. So microwaves work by using a magnetron that generates microwaves. And the microwaves don't just fill up the entire area inside of the microwave. But because the microwaves are composed of waves, what happens is you end up with this standing wave pattern. And because of this standing wave pattern, you end up getting patches in your microwave where there's almost no microwave power and then patches where there's maximum microwave power. So that's why most microwaves have a turntable in it because if you just put it in one spot you could accidentally put your food in a part where it has very low microwave power and it won't heat it very well at all. But if you put it on the turntable it will pass it through a lot of area 
so it will inevitably hit an area that has high microwave power. And because of the wavelength of microwaves themselves, which are around 12 centimeters, that means that the nodes in my microwave or the standing wave pattern should have patches that are about half of that wavelength apart, so around six centimeters apart. So in one dimensional waves, the peaks and nodes would look like this. But for two dimensional waves, it's gonna be spread out a little more complicated so that there'll be a two dimensional plane of peaks and nodes. So let's see if I put my cardboard of lit paint in the microwave that I can pick up the standing wave pattern of microwaves in my microwave oven. Should be pretty cool. Let's see if I can actually do it. Okay, three, two, one. Whoa. Look at that. That is cool. You can totally see the standing waves in there. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, look at that pattern. So the spacing in between those is just about six centimeters. Okay, so the distance between the bright spots in there was almost exactly six centimeters. And if you don't happen to have this lit paint lying around, you could actually use just some cardboard covered with cheese or small marshmallows or something, and you should be able to see a similar type pattern. The problem with using this method though is the longer you heat it up, the more the heat spreads, and so it kind of washes out the peaks and the valleys. And so the best point is right when it starts to heat, when you start to see it start melting, or for my lit hair, right when it started to light up where I could see it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and you can hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out and leave me any comments or questions that you have in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.